Hey, I'm Cassie from New York City. Please like and subscribe. I was born with a lot of expectations. My parents were famous international figure skaters with tons of trophies and medals. So all anyone could ever talk about was how their kid would also be a great skater someday. The whole world waited for me to step foot in the rink. And when that day came, I fell flat on my face. Go easy on her, it's her first time. Only it wasn't just the first time. It was the next time and the next and every time after that. I was just no good. My parents tried involving me in every sport imaginable, but nothing improved my coordination. And after visiting an optometrist, I learned that poor vision could be causing my balance issues. I was prescribed thick glasses, now a physical reminder of how different I was from my parents. And I was still as clumsy as ever. When I started middle school, I was determined to find something I'd be good at. But I didn't like studying much, so not academics. I tried out for drama club and was thrilled when I got a part in the school play. But in the first rehearsal, I tripped over my own feet and grabbed the nearest thing for support. Unfortunately, that thing was my principal's tie, and we both went crashing into the backdrop. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to strangle you. By the time I was in ninth grade, I did still have skating lessons, but my parents didn't push me anymore, like they'd given up. How could I be their daughter and be so untalented? One day at home, I was bringing my science project downstairs when I tripped and stumbled forward. My project went flying, but a pretty girl standing below caught it just before it crashed to the ground. Ah, oh, hey, thanks a lot. But who are you? I'm Ava. Ava, yeah, Ava. Um, I don't know any Ava. My parents explained that she was my cousin, the daughter of my mom's sister. Ava's mom had gotten sick, so Ava would be living with us now, in my room. We do have an empty attic. Don't be rude, Cassie. Take Ava's things upstairs. Actually, let your father do it so everything arrives in one piece. It actually wasn't bad having Ava around. We quickly became like sisters. I got used to sharing my stuff with her, and she listened to my rants about being clumsy and good for nothing. Is it really so important to be great at something? Ugh, try asking my parents that. As soon as winter hit, we took Ava to the skating rink, and I was even excited to have a beginner to skate with. So, the first thing you do is, whoa! Oh, right, I wasn't exactly an expert. Cassie, go sit down before you get hurt. We'll take Ava from here. And almost minutes after stepping onto the rink, Ava skated across the ice like a goddess. Mom and Dad were thrilled and couldn't stop cheering her on. And even worse, paparazzi were photographing the entire thing. What a beautiful child. And she definitely inherited your talents on the ice. My heart raced. Oh, God, was I jealous? Ava had just come into our lives, and she already had my parents' adoration in the palm of her hand. After that, my parents became obsessed with training Ava. She constantly got compliments on her blonde hair and blue eyes, and the media was always comparing her to my parents. She did look like my mom, actually, but I felt completely sidelined. Soon after, I changed my hair and started wearing makeup every day. I even convinced my parents to let me wear gray contact lenses so I could ditch the glasses. Wow, Cassie, you look great. But why do you want to change the way you look? You're not the only one in this family who can impress people, Ava. Jeez, relax, I never said I was. After that, we grew apart, even though we had skating lessons together. Ava's went on longer because they were more intense. One day, I was waiting in the gym for her to get done when the dance team came in for rehearsal. Once their class ended, I saw the teacher fiddling with her video camera. What's wrong, Miss Miller? My camera stopped working in the middle, and I have no idea how I positioned the girls after the twirl. Oh, let me see. Um, you had four people up front and three in the back. On the eighth count, the three came up with their hands and did a quarter turn, and then the chorus started. I kept going, explaining one move after the other. Oh, thank you, dear. You're a lifesaver. Hold on, let me write all this down. When I went back to the bleachers, a girl stopped me. How did you remember all that? What do you mean? That was like 32 moves you just recited, by memory. Not even the teacher could remember them. That's amazing. No one had ever said I was amazing at, well, anything. Uh, thanks. I'm Jenny, by the way. You should stop by room 402 after school. A few of us brainiacs are competing for the national academic quiz this spring. We could really use a talent like yours. Academics were never really my strength. Still, she'd said I had a talent, and I didn't hear that often. 
Later at dinner, I told my parents and Ava about the competition, but they just seemed unsure. Cassie, sweetie, you hardly ever do well on your tests. Why would they want you on their team? And you still have your skating. Won't that take up too much time? I guess, but if you want a chance at going to regionals, you should spend extra time at the rink. Ava's already secured her spot, but if you don't want it, that's another thing. I did want to skate, but I couldn't really get Jenny's offer out of my head. So the next day, I decided to stop by room 402. Cassie, you came. Everyone, this is the girl with the stellar memory. All the students welcomed me, but one, Raymond. He was the smartest guy in school and annoyingly good looking. I told you, we don't need another member. Come on, Ray, we could really use her. Name five geological seas. Uh, well, there's the Pacific Ocean. Not oceans, genius, seas. Okay, uh, there's the Red Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Blue Sea. There's a Blue Sea, right? There has to be. I rest my case. He walked away, shoving each student's face back in their books. We study hard so we don't end up like her at nationals. We're not leaving until we know every Enlightenment-era artist like the back of our hands. Huffing, I turned to leave and tripped over a chair's leg, with Raymond watching me. Ugh, oh, just my luck. I didn't know why I cared so much, but I just wanted to prove him wrong. So later that night, I asked Jenny what they were studying and dove into a sea of online articles. I thought mom told you not to bother with that nerd stuff, Cassie. Come on, we're gonna be late for skating. You could go to regionals if you just practice a little harder. Something in me just snapped. My mom, your aunt. Stop calling them mom and dad. You're not actually their daughter, no matter how hard you try to be. Ava looked hurt and I instantly regretted my words, but I was so tired of being second best to her. The next day, I reviewed flashcards secretly all during my classes and I was the first one to reach room 402, followed shortly by Raymond. I thought I told you to scram, klutz. Oh, I must have tripped over my own memory. My bad. When the other students arrived, he started quizzing me on the spot. What is the function of the cerebellum in the human brain? To help with balance for walking and standing? So funny. <laughs> that was an easy one. How about, what's the smallest country in the world? I thought for a moment. Really, it's a trick question. Niue if you're going by population. Vatican City if you're going by landmass. The Latin name for gold? Aram. The first country to start the Panama Canal. France. Raymond looked annoyed as I answered question after question perfectly. See? That's why we need her, Ray. Fine. You're on the team. I'll consider it. If you ask nicely. Would you... Please join our team. I spent all of my free time studying for the quiz tournament coming up. I didn't have problem solving skills, but I could memorize anything I read. After studying, I'd attend my skating lessons and slowly I started to improve there too. Maybe having Ava as a rival was motivating me because I actually managed to complete my set without falling. We were doing twirls and I was dangerously close to beating Ava for once when my eyes started burning like crazy. Cassie, what's wrong with your eyes? Nothing, I'm fine. Don't be stupid, put your glasses on. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Fine, suit yourself. I put in eye drops, but they kept burning. And I was so distracted that I fell and hurt my ankle. My parents took me to the doctor who told me I needed to keep my lenses out for a while, but I wasn't doing that. Cassie, you're gonna hurt yourself if you're not careful. You just like it better when I'm self-conscious, don't you? because you're nervous that I'm actually getting better at skating and mom and dad might cheer for me for once. Ugh, whatever, moron. One afternoon after skating, I passed an empty classroom and heard someone singing and playing the guitar. I peeked inside and saw that it was Raymond and he sounded so good. As I tried to get my head a little more through the door, I lost my balance and fell right into the classroom. Raymond turned around startled, then cracked up when he saw me on the floor. He helped me up, and my heart skipped a beat. What are you doing here? Sorry, I just, I didn't know you could play and sing. You're really good. Don't tell anyone. Why? If anyone in school knows, it might get back to my dad, and he'll have a fit if he finds out I've been playing music instead of studying. A part of me felt bad for Raymond. I knew what it was like to fail your parents' expectations. Of course, I agreed to keep his secret. And soon enough, the best part of my day became the quiz practices. I loved feeling appreciated and being part of a team. And even Raymond was growing on me. All right, guys, it's official. 
the National Academics Quiz is next Friday after school. Uh-oh. What? That's the same day as my skating tournament. My parents had tickets in the front row, and it would be the first time they'd see me skate decently. My team begged me to reconsider, but I had to tell them no. Raymond stayed quiet until everyone left. You're really gonna throw away all this work for some skating thing? You wouldn't understand why this is so important to me, because you've always been good at everything. But me? Finally, I'm good enough to compete. I have talent. You've always had talent. You just never saw what it really is. I have to do this. Skating is part of my blood. It's my family legacy. For so long, I've held on to this dream that one day I could skate without making a fool of myself. I could beat Ava and look over to see my parents smile. So, nothing about actually skating. Oh, please, you're one to talk. Keeping your music hidden instead of just telling your dad. You don't know what you're talking about. And he just, and then he stormed off. Friday came and I made my way to the ice rink. Ava was the first to perform her routine. And of course, everyone was wowed by her grace and beauty. But for the first time, I just didn't have it in me to be jealous. I kinda didn't care. Beat that. You know what, Ava? I don't want to. This isn't where I want to be. I quickly started unlacing my skates. What are you doing? You're missing your chance. I'm not a skater, Mom. I think I've been trying so hard to be one because I didn't want to feel left out of this family. But I'll never be you. And I have something that's important to me. And for once, it's not about impressing you and Dad. Luckily, you have Ava for that. Shoving my skates in their hands, I rushed to the quiz venue. My team was in the final round, and they needed a few more questions to win. Raymond beamed when he saw me and subbed me in. The last question was on the board, but suddenly my eyes started itching like crazy. I was having trouble seeing and the timer was ticking down. I quickly pulled out my contacts and put my big, ugly glasses on. I read the question and hit the buzzer, answering correctly and winning us the championship with a second to spare. We walked out proudly with our new gold medals and my parents and Ava were waiting for me. Oh, Cassie, we thought being good at sports would make you happy because that's what made us happy. But we're so proud of you for following your own path. You killed it up there, champ. The first of many medals. I have to admit, your medal looks pretty cool. Yours does too, cuz. So what do you say? Friends, not enemies? I'd like that. And I'm sorry for some stuff I said, Forgiven and forgotten, it was a near-perfect day, but there was still one person I wanted to see. I found Raymond playing his guitar in the park, and he looked so cute. Hey, nice glasses. They fit with the whole academic vibe you've got going on. I'm thinking about making it my signature look. You look like the real you. What are you doing out here anyway? You've inspired me, Cassie. I want to change my major to music when I go to college. Who cares what my dad wants, right? I'll just have to be honest with him about what I want. Sounds like you got it figured out. Almost, but I'd like a certain girl's number before I leave. I scribbled my phone number on his guitar and kissed him on the cheek. 